Southwest Savings Bank, you still get personalized customer service. We have identity safe checking with LifeLock, identity theft protection. You get personal mortgage lending to fit your needs now and in the future. You get business banking with the latest technology because saving you time saves you money. At Council of Savings Bank, you get people who answer when you call and local employees who are actively involved in our community. Council of Savings Bank, hometown banking the way it used to be. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I call the meeting to order. Um, let the record show all city council are in attendance and would entertain a motion for the consent agenda. So, second. <coughs> Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Both same sign. Well, we have two proclamations tonight. The first, it's my distinct pleasure to recognize Council Bluffs as a Purple Heart City. With this proclamation, City of Council Bluffs, Iowa, Office of the Mayor Proclamation. The City of Council Bluffs and the State of Iowa has always supported its military veteran population. And whereas the Purple Heart is the oldest military decoration in present use and was initially created as the badge of military merit by General George Washington in 1782, and whereas the Purple Heart was the first American service award or decoration made available to the common soldier and is specifically awarded to members of the United States Armed Forces who have been wounded or paid the ultimate sacrifice in combat with a declared enemy of the United States of America. And whereas the mission of the military order of the Purple Heart is to foster an environment of goodwill among the combat wounded veteran members and their families, to promote patriotism, to support legislative initiatives, and most importantly, to make sure we never forget and whereas the Council Bluffs metropolitan area has a large, highly decorated veteran population, and whereas Council Bluffs appreciates the sacrifices our Purple Heart recipients made in defending our freedoms and believe it is important that we acknowledge them for their courage and show them the honor and support they have earned, therefore I, Matthew J. Walsh, Mayor of the City of Council Bluffs, does hereby proclaim the City of Council Bluffs as a Purple Heart city. And I encourage the citizens of the City of Council Bluffs to show their appreciation for the sacrifices that the Purple Heart recipients have made in defending our freedoms, to acknowledge their courage, and to show them the honor and support that they have earned. Witness herein with the seal of the City of the Council Bluffs on this 23rd day of March in the year 2015. And I'd like to present it to whoever is.
Thank you again for your service. Thank you. We certainly can. Yeah. Why don't you come up here and you can get a picture with the entire council if you if you just stand up front stand we in can the middle? probably we'll see yeah, over. <clears throat> Yeah, I was going to say, my, yeah, my chair is incredibly <laughs> low. <Good point>. Our second proclamation, we oftentimes have the opportunity to uh, use city proclamations for public awareness um, efforts. And so um, this second proclamation is uh, designating March um, as Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month. City of Council Bluffs, Iowa Office of the Mayor proclamation, whereas colorectal cancer is the third most commonly diagnosed cancer and the second most common cause of cancer deaths for cancers that affect both men and women in the United States. And whereas one in 20 Iowans will be di diagnosed with colorectal cancer in their lifetime, and whereas the vast majority of colon cancer deaths can be prevented through proper screening and early detection, and the five-year survival rate of individuals is 90% when cancer is detected at an early stage, and whereas only 40% of colorectal cancer patients have their cancers detected at an early stage, and whereas if the majority of the people in the United States age 50 and older were screened regularly for colorectal cancer, the death rate from this disease could be dramatically reduced. And whereas colorectal cancer is preventable, treatable, beatable, and in most, case, in most cases, and finally, whereas observing a colorectal cancer awareness month during the month of March would provide a special opportunity to offer education on the importance of early detection and screening. Therefore, I am Matt Walsh, Mayor of the City Council Bluffs, does proclaim March 2015 as Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month in the City of Council Bluffs and urge all citizens to take due note of this observance with the signature of the my signature and the seal of the City of Council Bless affects this 23rd day of March. So again, if you're over the age of 50, um, make sure that you get uh, screenings for um, uh, colon cancer. So, all right, uh, moving on to the public hearings. This is a time and place for a public hearing is advertised on the matter of Resolution 15-82, authorizing the mayor and the city clerk to execute an electrical easement in connection with the North 28th Street stormwater pump station project. Is proof of publication on file? It is on file. Have any written protests been received? None received. Is there anyone in attendance who would like to speak in regards to this matter? Seeing none, what's the council's? Uh, yes. Is it in regards to this issue, sir? Well, uh, I heard that old baseball field. No, um, you can speak at the end of the meeting. Um, this is in particular in relation to uh, okay. this particular item, but the meeting is going to go fast, and you're welcome to speak at the end of the meeting. Uh, all right. Yes. And, and so you say you're wanting to speak in regards to the 28th Street pump station? No, I just have a question All right. about okay. the All right. Thank you. You bet. Um, anyone else who would wish to speak in regards to the 28th Street stormwater pump station project? 
Anyone from the council? Or I guess is there a motion? I'm sorry. Motion to approve the resolution. Second. Second. Any discussion by the council? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. This is time and place for public hearing is advertised on the matter of resolution 15-83, authorizing the mayor to execute a quit claim deed and any documents necessary to transfer the interest of, in city property as set herein. Is proof of publication on file? It is on file. Is proof or have any written protests been received? None received. Is there anyone here who would wish to speak in regards to this issue? <coughs> what is the council's pleasure? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Madam Clerk. <coughs> Ordinance on first reading, Ordinance 6229, amending the zoning map as adopted by reference in section 15.02.040 by rezoning property generally described as lying between I-480 and Avenue B, list of existing North 40th Street, commonly referred to as Rivers Edge Subdivision, by rezoning proposed Block 1 from R4 High Density Multifamily Residential District to R4 High Density Multifamily Residential with a PR plan residential overlay and rezoning proposed blocks two and six from four, R4 high density multifamily residential and A2 parks estates and agricultural district to R4 high density multifamily residential with a PR plan residential overlay as defined in chapter 15.11 and 15.28 and by rezoning proposed block seven from R4 density multifamily residential district to C4 commercial district as defined in chapter 15.17 and by rezoning proposed outlots A and B from R4 high density multifamily residential to A2 parks estates and <coughs> district the property as defined in chapter 15.05 and setting a public hearing for April 6, 2015 at 7 p.m. Move the ordinance to second reading and set public hearing for 7 p.m. on April 6, 2015. Second. Any discussion? Uh, only to say that uh, I, uh, my, my opinion on this is, uh, you know, a lot of good work has, has gone into uh, the, this whole series of uh, ordinances and resolutions into the development of this building project and my concern is the uh, is the prioritization of this project uh, ahead of uh, completing the redevelopment on west broadway simply that and then i'd like to point out for those that are in regular attendance or regularly watch um because we have memorial day coming up if you heard the motion it was for the april 6th meeting typically we meet on the second and fourth mondays of the month beginning in april we'll meet on the first and third until memorial day so that we can spread those meetings out with a meeting in between so um if you need to adjust your calendars we will be on the first and the third um, mondays from April and May, so um, any other discussion? And sir, I believe you said you wanted to address this issue? Sir? You want to address this issue? Yes. Yes, I have a few Please step to the microphone and give your name and address for the record. Uh, I don't know, my name's Tim Page, and I live at 1029 North 8th Street. And I don't know all the facts, <coughs> but uh, the way the, the riverfront is now, uh, who paid for that? The taxpayers? To have it fixed? It's, uh, Over the last three or four years to fix it. Are you talking in regards to Hannafin Park or to the levee, or I'm not sure exactly what you're I'm talking about speaking. where, uh, you know, we go to, toward Omaha, right there on the right, that, that thing you guys have been working on for three or four years where they hold all the concerts. That uh, Riverfront Park was paid for from a variety of sources, State of Iowa um, grants, Great Places grants, REAP grants. Um, a significant contribution from the Iowa West Foundation and a portion of it from taxpayers. Could I have a copy of all that? 
um, if you would stop by the Council Bluffs Parks Department tomorrow, they can give you that detail. Okay. And the, uh, the, the, only, the only reason I'm saying this is because I thought when that was built, it was going to be built for the people, to, for the park and, the, and uh, you know, concerts like we hold down there. Right. And now you want to turn it to in these tall buildings. There's only 26 no, acres. It, it, the park will remain as it is. This is on the what they call the dry side of the levee. The park's on the wet side of the levee, the west side of the levee. This is the old... Are you still going to hold concerts there? Yes. Uh, we have oh. uh, one Memorial Day weekend. It's, so. over, it's over on the other side. It's on the other side yeah. of that? That park yeah. will remain as it is no. uh, with some improvements to it. So. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very right. much. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Don't bother. Okay. Um, do we have a motion? Um, mm -hmm. yes. I, right. I motion. I think Nate second. Any other discussion? Yes. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Nay. And for those at home, that vote was four to one. Madam Clerk. Resolutions. Resolution adopting a plan residential development plan and granting preliminary plan approval for a seven lot subdivision to be known as River's Edge Subdivision. Resolution 15-85. Adopting a plan residential development plan for posts blocks one, two, and six, Rivers Edge subdivision, and resolution 15 86, granting preliminary plan approval for a seven block subdivision to be known as Rivers Edge subdivision, being part of the government lot three of the southwest quarter, southwest quarter of section 28 75 44 and part of government lot one of the northwest quarter, northwest quarter of section 33-75-44 and lots 174 through 182 and lots 194 through 201, Twin City Gardens along with all vacated alleys inclusive and the portion of North 40th Street lying south of the southerly right-of-way line of Avenue B and north of the state right-of-way all in the city of Council Bluffs, Pottawatomie County. Motion to approve resolution 7A1 and A2. Second. Discussion. Um, the, you know, I, I, I forgot to mention on the other one, uh, for those people at home who might want uh, to know a little bit more information on, on what's going on on the dry side of the levy, levy down at River's Edge, uh, embedded into the text on 6A is a website that you can click on and it will take you directly to the plan so you can see everything that's, that's been um, drafted so far. You can, you can stop by the Parks Department they, or, or Community Development. I guess Parks Department's not uh, appropriate. The, the Community Development Department. Where's that located? Uh, across the street below the fire station. Okay. And, and if you go to the library um, and have someone assist you do a, to do a search through the uh, newspaper archives, there's actually some pretty good articles and, and photographs as well. As well as the internet there, and you, uh, for people to see, it's it's a fantastic, fantastic mix of commercial, of various types of residential, a lot of things that there is a massive demand for, particularly among retiring baby boomers and uh, the up and coming millennials. It's uh, it's fantastic, and I recommend everybody check it out. And you know, this is a, a project I'm really excited about because it will eventually add a lot of money to the tax rolls and we need that in order to keep our levy low we need to keep adding more properties um, but it is going to be a really nice development and I know you know concerns over prioritization <coughs> the nice part about this project is we have a developer ready willing and able to do the project and that's really you know the biggest part of any plan is having somebody willing to execute it and be able to afford to do it and have the ability to do it so I'm really excited about it and the additional uh, businesses and, and uh, residents to our community mm -hmm. will, will certainly um, have a huge impact on the, our economic growth. All right. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Yay. And again, four to one for those at home. Resolution 15-84, confirming the appointment of Daniel Jordet in the position of Director of Finance with the City of Council Plus and providing the wage and benefit package offered to him. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 
Opposed, same sign. Resolution 15-87, authorizing the mayor to execute a certified local government grant award contract to undertake an intensive level survey and evaluation program for a potential residential hi historic district in the South 8th Street area. Motion to approve. Second. <coughs> Did I, I notice there are some yeah, representatives. If, if you want to speak, you're certainly welcome to. If you're just here to observe, you're certainly welcome to observe. So, all right. <laughs> um, any discussion from the council? Well, I'd actually like, they're, they're very modest out there, and so I'll embarrass them for a moment. Um, uh, the, the three individuals from the South 8th uh, uh, area, from the, the Bayless West neighborhood there, uh, have uh, been among the uh, biggest supporters and the ones putting in dozens, if not hundreds, of hours towards this fantastic project, this partnership between a grant uh, that the city applied for with significant help from you uh, to the federal government and then uh, the, the city contribution being uh, the labor that that you and, and a few other folks are putting into this project to create the, the fourth historic residential district and you really are to be commended for all of the efforts you're putting into this it's really a lot of unsung heroes here and, and so thank you yeah, having having looked over the the packet and seeing the amount of bureaucracy and the amount of hurdles that that have to be <laughs> overcome, and the amount of time and dedication that that you all have put into this, um, I only wish it weren't so burdensome on on folks like you trying to do something not only for your neighborhood but also the the community. So I want to echo uh, Mr. Watson's comments and keep up the good work. Thank you. And, and what's interesting to me um, <coughs> is this is an opportunity for um, the group that's working on this to to capture a lot of information, historical information that otherwise may be may be lost. And Nate, you went through a, a litany of it this afternoon, and and it's um, I, I think it's it's just a great opportunity for those who may not be aware of of the historical significance of the homes and the people who who live there. It's a great opportunity for for them to learn. So thank you. Any other discussion? Bruce? <coughs> One thing I like, 864 McKenzie Avenue. <coughs> One thing, Bruce, Bruce you Kelly. Yeah, thanks. i like to thank these people for saving these houses and make sure that they are and not turn into apartments and everything like that and keep these grand homes the way they should be. I really appreciate it. Any other discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Resolution 15-88, authorizing the mayor and the city clerk to execute a contract with Hyphenex Corporation for the city's yard waste disposal. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Resolution-89. 15-89, authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute a contract with Compass Utility LLC for the Lower Bennett Rehab Phase 6 project. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion. I just want to point out that uh, this will be the sixth phase of the Lower Bennett uh, reconstruction of the streets, and uh, most of these have been reconstructed, well, in about three generations. And uh, last time we were voting on uh, a lot of streets in the South First area. And just so folks know, the streets that, and a great deal, if not most, if not all of this comes from your local option sales tax, uh, it has included uh, recreating entirely Arnold Avenue, Adrian, Milky, Robin, Lillian, Beale, Lake, the rest of Arnold, Wynwood Circle, Wedgwood Drive, Windsor Circle, Bonham Avenue, and this particular phase now will include reconstruction of portions of Wynwood Circle and Wedgwood Drive that haven't already been reconstructed. And as well, we'll continue our project of correcting uh, an unfortunate oversight for a few decades of when sidewalks were not required in certain building in our community. This will correct that and put sidewalks there so that people children can get to school buses safely and families can be out uh, and, uh, and have a safe way to uh, have a good quality of life. It's a fantastic project that you pay for with your local option sales tax. And I, I think you just need to know about that. 
Any other discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same <laughs> sign. Applications for permits and cancellations 8A, <coughs> 1, and 3 through 10, and 8B, salvage yards permits. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion. Uh, do, uh, I, oh, she did pull it out? Yeah. Okay. I didn't hear that. Thank you. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion to postpone 8A2. I, I really want to encourage the owner of this particular establishment, uh, Padanka Ronks Bar and Grill at, at 23rd, 2327 South 24th, to, uh, to take this opportunity to come to the next uh, council meeting. There have been uh, a, a fair number of rather serious uh, concerns with police calls throughout the year, not just in warmer months or holidays, and give them an opportunity to talk with us and perhaps the police chief. Uh, about what they might be doing to uh, to alleviate this problem, so that that uh, speaking for myself, I might be in a position to consider voting for their license renewal. And at the moment, uh, rather dubious about doing that, but I want to give them an opportunity to explain how they're going to fix things if they are. Further discussion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Uh, Madam Clerk, any requests from citizens to be heard? None received. Anyone from the audience? Don? Don Angeroth, 10 Stubblefield Drive. A couple things on 7D, uh, changing the company that's going to be picking up the yard waste. What does that do to the garbage bills? Same, uh, my understanding is it's the same schedule um, for the contracted amount the uh, previous company is no longer in business so. okay so the garbage bills are not changing in any way no okay the next thing uh i'm here as the president of the potawatomi county landlord association we got a few members that are a little concerned we were told when we were negotiating and working out this rental inspection that that would not start until august and that it before that we were promised some classes that were going to be offered. Uh, what about this clean sweep that's been taking place for the last week over here west of Bayless Park, where the city is going in and inspecting rentals, which is a little different than what we've been told. And so we have some members that are in you know, yeah, I'm, concern I'm, about this. Not aware of that. I'll find out for you. If you'd like to call my office tomorrow, I'll have an answer for you. Um, okay. It, does, it did not, the full-scale rental inspection program employees have not been hired yet. Yes, I understand that. And <clears throat> we always had a rental inspector, and so it doesn't mean that she stops doing her job well, no. until August. But No, but I mean, it's just sort of funny that there's blanketing <coughs> a large area all at once which is different than just sending out a notice to a landlord here and there. It's, <coughs> it's a little different. It's, ba it's based on areas in use. It's also based on complaints. And uh, so folks who are honestly filling out the forms uh, under the current standards, which actually will get in about two dozen ways <coughs> more advantageous for you in August when that goes into effect, uh, have, have nothing to, to worry about. It's, it's the current law. You already self-inspect. Uh, if folks are getting caught doing things they shouldn't be doing, well, then it's not it's a matter of being caught. It's a matter of being city inspected sort of ahead of the schedule we were you know, presented. I, I don't believe that's the case because, again, we haven't hired that staff. And, True. I, and it's somewhat ironic to me that that members of your association would be suing the city for not doing their job and then now up here protesting because they're doing their job. And I find that somewhat strange, to be honest well, with you. Are you talking about totally different things? But Well, okay. I don't think we are. Well, well, it is costing the taxpayer money to defend against the lawsuits that your organization folks, a part of it, have, have filed uh, about the current program, no lawsuits about the uh, change, but the current program that many folks said they wanted to keep uh, 
are suing, claiming that it was horribly wrong at the same time and costing the taxpayer money to defend. So I'd echo the mayor, it is, it is confusing. I, I wish there'd be some consistency as to what folks want or what they're against rather than conveniently being against things at one time and for it and another. I don't think the lawsuit was against that type of inspection. It was about other procedures, <coughs> but that's not to be handled here. All right, thank you. Anybody else from the audience? Anybody from the council? Bruce? Bruce Kelly, 864 McKenzie Avenue. Behind the Elks Club, I don't know if any of you have ever been out there and stuff, we have a mm -hmm. slew pond back there. How long is those slew ponds supposed to be in existence when the building that it was draining for is done being built? In today's DNR regulated water quality environment, they're not called slew ponds anymore. They're called detention ponds. Okay, whatever. And typically those detention ponds are designed so that they will drain. They're there to retain water a length of time to allow the sediment in the water to settle and then the water to to vent out into the sewer system. Um, and so I'm not sure exactly as to the design of that pond. Um, one of the things that I do know is when um, there was a major project in town, and I can't remember for sure exactly which one it was, but that area was mined for the dirt. And so I don't know if the contractor created a non-draining detention area um, so that water wouldn't run out um, I, I'm really not familiar, but I can find out for you if you give me a call. Okay, one of the things you know, I was worried about, stuff like that, and mostly when we do rent the, the facility out, we have kids <coughs> going over there because they hear the frogs and everything, and I know it belongs to one of the like, real estate company owns it and stuff like that, and it's not fenced in, and they did come in last year and cut the trees out of it, and we, I, it took me forever to get them out there to get a dead deer out of this, out of it, and, and like, that's what, and then the, when it does drain, they don't maintain around where it's supposed to be drained, and the city doesn't maintain it either, which is, it's not on there. Not the city's property. And stuff, and it, we fight with them and everything, and I gotta say, Virgil Anderson came over and cleaned it out for us. I couldn't get the people that owned it, the property, to come out because they said we've been out there once and we're not coming out again. And, and, and I, that's what and it's tearing our our parking lot is a mess because yeah. it lands up on top of our parking lot out there, and now our parking lot is crumbling apart. Who's the owner? Well, that's what I hated to say. Uh, you know that property. I don't know who. Um, who actually does own it fairway owns their property the people that own the businesses in that building each own I their had own, to go through each own their own building and would pay a cam fee for common area maintenance and and Virgil was the person who did the excavation and I don't know if that's on his property I don't know if it's on Elks property so I hate to it's a, it belongs to a, one of our major real estate companies well the the uh, because I to those get are a, condo. Well, some are rented, some are condo. So I'm talking about it drains off of the where the dentists down into this area and stuff behind it stuff. And like I said, and the we, got mosquito, the dentist, dentist we got mosquito, mosquito property. property. Yeah. We got mosquito problems. We got kids and stuff. When we, I mean, we're out there yelling at kids to keep out of there. There's no fencing, nothing. Yeah, I, I, I'll look into it for you, but if it was designed for that project, it is a true detention area, and, and our detention areas typically don't have fencing around them, but their depth is such that yeah. that it shouldn't be a risk to people. Um, the dentist actually owns his property. Um, so, again, I... No, it's just a, something I wanted to bring up. But then one of the other things, I read in the newspaper, I know where our budget, you guys figured that out, and everything like that and there was 
I heard there was there might be a shortfall in it and stuff like that. Then I read about buying a new compactor for the to compact our trash down there. There are there. two what they call proprietary businesses that the city runs. One is the sanitary sewer system, and you saw the fees go up on that last week. It's not paid for with property taxes. It's paid for by assessing a fee for usage. The other proprietary business is refuge collection. Refuge. And I, I get this look again, shaking his head, but that's exactly how it's paid for. Um, and the refuse collection is paid for by garbage fees and that is its own separate business and and they also run the recycling center and so the recycling center and the garbage collection fees then are used to run those operations it's not paid for by tax dollars and so this isn't going to be a talk it is coming out of their business it's coming out of their business at the That's recycling I, center and the reason they're doing that is it costs money to ship bales of cardboard and paper and these new compactors will compact it tighter, allow them to get more on the semi-trailer and cut back on some of the shipping expense. Um, what, I, what I was looking at, how is the city going to have to pay for it or are they going to pay for it? The, the uh, new it compactor. Will, it will come out of the um, refuge funds so it's not so it, it doesn't come from taxpayer it's down. already something that's yeah. already been collected for okay now that, again the individual residents of the city pay a garbage fee so if you say are the city residents going to pay for it yes they are but it's not coming out of tax dollars it's coming what out. I meant what I was worried about is is it was it coming on all, all of our general fund no, and we no. didn't and that's and where you're right the general I, fund that's the budget question I wanted to get cleared up because you know you got a machine maybe it's not packing as good and we got a deficit you know we we yeah. don't have what we think we have coming in is it how long is it going to take to recapture that three hundred and fifty thousand dollars versus if we kept the same machine going for another few more years until we could afford to buy it i, I don't have an honest answer for it so i so can get that I information was, but i I'd, I'd be not, I'd be misleading if I gave you some type time frame. You know that's what I was worried about. But if it's not going to raise our garbage no. and residue right now, then it, no. it's not a, a it's not a tax burden problem. It's and stuff. I know I've talked to Nate last time about it, mm -hmm. and that's what I was trying to get because if we were I had a shortfall and we didn't have it in the general fund, we shouldn't be buying it. And I remember your point, and, and I understand what you're saying. It's just in this case, um, we can't, that money is separate. So, you know, th those, as the mayor says, the two proprietary things we do, those pay for themselves. And so we, if, we, if we take the money out, if we raid the money to pay for other things, first of all, that's really bad budgeting. And, yeah, and secondly, th that would be a, a very clever way to get all sorts of money from other programs to raise taxes through the back door and and that's just not proper budgeting and so honest budgeting that money stays with that money and it's they make a small profit generally with that that business it runs itself and they they think this is going to make it more efficient so that they can continue to long, uh, as as so that always, rates don't go up as long as the rates you know that's what yeah. i was it should save money. It's the cost of it's the cost of labor and space. Okay, that it's that, a good business. That's a decision. different yeah. deal. I figured if we're running the place down there and we have, and it's coming out of our general fund, and we don't have the money to really pay for it. No, it's it's separate. So so that that makes a difference. I hear what you're saying. Yeah. That's like me and the county got into it about putting in a security system and to tell everybody they didn't didn't have the money to pay for it and raised everybody taxes thank you and I'm still trying to find out when they have meetings down there where for the parks the one um, that the one that's in uh, the commission the parks commission you said that you thought they had one yeah once do, a you month. Have, do you have do you have you have the uh, the agenda or the, uh, the, the only thing schedule? I could find was for, on Fairmont and they only meet every three months well, there's a par there's well a par there's they had two commission. months there's, oh, excuse me. You're talking about the Parks Commission, right? The Parks Board? Yeah. 
I think maybe Marcy, you have access to that information, right? Sure. You want to get with Marcy tomorrow, and she'll be able to let you know what the okay. schedule is. And so it's also on the city website under under agendas. You just oh, it is under dig city down. website. Yeah. You can you can sign up to get a, an email or a text message if you do one of those two things. Or you know the the reason why it was three months, they didn't have a meeting, as I understand it, from their their minutes in January or February. They didn't have any. Well, they got two boards. One's the Fairmont board that only meets every three months i don't think there there's no there's no official board there might be friends of fairmont friends of fairmont and they, like they meet here and you're in the chamber here. But, but i think you you you're asking about the parks commission yeah it's in a, yeah so that's that's the schedule's on online and every time i try to get a hold of mr foster he's either gone or out of the office i still have a tree up there at it 825 that needs to be trimmed as like i said it's three and a half now it's going on and just, four years. just leave a message at the desk larry's been on vacation uh, for the i've already talked days. to Bob about we'll it and we, we've been arguing about it for three years he'll be back tomorrow okay okay i know he'll be back tomorrow basically. anybody else anybody from the council um again i want to remind you that beginning next month we go to the first and third um, Mondays of the month for the month of April and the month of May. Um, I'd gotten some calls um, in regards to two things when Bruce mentioned the security system at the courthouse. Um, it reminded me of one, which I've gotten people that have called, people that have actually left the courthouse and come over to City Hall to uh, express their displeasure about the new security system at the courthouse that is a county um, facility and as such then is overseen by the county board of supervisors and so that is who those questions should be directed to um, today I received my first call on the uh, um, em a potential eminent domain that would occur with the new council bluff school district um, expansion of their athletic field again assessing blame on the city I I just don't think people realize that when you vote um, in elections you vote for three different major taxing authorities you you vote for the City Council which is the lowest tax collector in the city of Council Bluffs um, you should also vote for the county supervisors because they're the second highest tax collector ahead of the city and the council bluff school district who i believe is talking about lowering their levy but prior to lowering their levy is the highest collector of property taxes and so um, the council bluff school district has the ability to use eminent domain and if people object to that um, power that the state legislature has given them and want to express concerns to the responsible parties that is the council bluff school board it's not the the city council or the mayor's office and so i just want uh, people if if they want to represent themselves let them know that that those are who they should go to to talk about those things i know um, the school district has a meeting tomorrow at six o'clock and so um, I think that was in the newspaper, but uh, just an update for information purposes. And with that, we're adjourned. No, you only get one, Bruce. Thank you. <laughs> At Council Plus Savings Bank, you still get personalized customer service. We have identity safe checking with LifeLock, identity theft protection. You get personal mortgage lending to fit your needs now and in the future. You get business banking with the latest technology because saving you time saves you money. At Council of Savings Bank, you get people who answer when you call and local employees who are actively involved in our community. Council of Savings Bank, hometown banking the way it used to be.